back to Green Devils, an offensive rebound yet, and it's a 7-2 advantage on that side for Maryland. They had a big night last night against Wake Forest as well. The Terps 21-11 and 11 on the season, 8-10 and 10 in league play, the 7 seed coming into this tournament as we check in again with Janine. Well, Dan and Sean, a study of two huddles. I was just at both teams' huddles, and Maryland, every single player, their eyes were locked in on Mark Turgeon and his board. Every single player, they are in a zone right now, whereas at Duke's huddle, Mason Plumley was very upset, Quinn Cook was very upset, and Mike Krzyzewski was screaming, looking right at Quinn Cook, saying, what the heck was that? But they've obviously got some things to clean up. Well, they come up with a loose ball here, so maybe that's a start for the Blue Devils. Down 10, four and a half minutes into the game. Pull up by Rashid Suleiman, and it's 12 to 4. Both the baskets that Duke has had are coming off their on-ball screen. First, it was a slip action for Plumlee that time. Suleiman being very aggressive and stopped and popped at the free throw line. Layman into Len, fouled by Hairston. And Mark Turgeon's going to go to his bench right now. He's got a deeper team. He uses more people. And he's going to bring in about 530 pounds of offensive linemen right here. And Charles Mitchell and Shaquille Clear. These are two big bodies. Oh, and they can wear on you. And they've got to be able to sustain what the starters were able to build up. And that, that comes with being tough and physical. And with Kelly out of, uh, on the bench right now, this is, allows Mark Turgeon the freedom to have maybe a little bit of a slower lineup yeah. in the game. Mitchell would have trouble with Kelly, you would think, but he's got Hairston on him right now, whereas Clear, 6'9", 265, he's being defended by Plumlee. Now Kelly getting ready to check back in for Duke. Seth Allen into the game as well. And we've got a moving screen, a foul away from the ball on Shaquille Clear. So Ryan Kelly quickly comes back in the game, a great substitution by Coach K. Realizing that floor spacing is going to be that much more important with this lineup out on the floor right now for Maryland. And this will be interesting for Mitchell. Well, and Wells, who was on Kelly the first time, is going to be on Curry now with this lineup out on the floor. Adjustments being made. Wells recovers in time. Plumley asking for the ball. Curry elevates, misses the shot, and it's over the backboard to Maryland. A good defense that time and chasing by Wells. Now the versatility that Wells offers you right now at the defensive end of the floor, in particular with this matchup, where he's strong enough where he can disrupt Kelly. Yep. He's quick enough and long enough to disrupt Curry. Guarding a four and guarding a two within the span of a couple of minutes. One guy 6'11, one guy 6'2, and there's a carry called on Allen. And one of the issues that Maryland has had on and off this season is point guard play. We talked about it last night against Wake Forest. They've used Howard. They've used Allen. They have used Faust. At times, even Wells has been the primary ball handler. They don't have a go-to guy who has the ball in his hands 30 minutes a night. Well, and because of that inconsistency, we've seen a continued amount of turnovers that builds up and hurts you. Great pass by Plumlee to find Suleiman. They kind of forgot about him after he went tumbling out of bounds. Play through the double team, survey what the defense has, and if you won't have your shot, look for a teammate. Somebody's open, and that time it was Suleiman underneath. Faust over Curry. Off the back of the iron, loose ball rebound, down to Duke. Curry the look ahead, Plumley with a finish. Mason Plumley missed a couple of early shots, went to the bench, and since he's come back, he's been much more focused at either end. 6-0 run, Blue Devils. And now the Duke fans really making some noise for the first time tonight. Wells, little push-off, lost it on the way up. Mitchell, turnaround, kind of fading away from the basket, but the Terps get it back. Maryland, an outstanding rebounding team. One of the biggest issues for Duke coming into the game tonight. Maryland out rebounds its opponents by about 10 per game. Allen, Mark Turgeon says for, quote, for us to be good, he needs to score. He can come off the bench and light it up. Well, he worked so hard to get himself open on that play. He came up and off that screen about three or four times before he felt like he had the edge to get this little spot that he wanted. Suleiman heading to the free throw line. Well, Plumlee has been making his impact ever since he went to the bench again. Look at the read. The double team comes, step through, pivot, find Suleiman underneath. 
and just good on selfishness and then out in transition when he runs the floor hard not only does it open up opportunities for himself to score but usually he attracts so much of the defense that if you're trailing on the play you're going to find a wide open three from behind so good Good decision by Curry on that one to throw it ahead. You see the night Suleiman had against Maryland to add Cameron into a stadium in late January. Lost his starting job to Tyler Thornton a couple of games ago. And Thornton a, a more experienced player and a terrific defender as well has started the last three games now. But Suleiman has come off the bench with a little fire in his belly tonight it looks like. He's playing hard. Well he mentioned those games, last four games overall he's averaging just about four points per contest. And he's a better scorer than that, and he needs to start playing defense at a high level, especially as his team gets ready, not only for this weekend, but what lies ahead next week in the start of the NCAA tournament. Six already tonight for Suleiman. Duke back within five. And Suleiman down with the rebound in traffic. Suleiman. And rebound down to Lehman, who is back in. He's in the front court along with Mitchell and Len. Big lineup right now for Maryland as Des Wells again straight to the rim and he banks it home. As soon as his eyes focused up the floor and he saw Ryan Kelly standing in front of him, he knew he was going to attack the iron. And that's just great awareness by Des Wells. Maryland can be a very big physical team and a lot of flexibility in terms of the lineup for Mark Church, and they've got a big group in there right now. Look at Mitchell on a switch. He's got Cook on him. Kelly's being defended by Seth Allen. Look at Mitchell. He's not giving an inch. He's liking the matchup. That's outstanding defense by Mitchell. Not allowing the quicker guard to get by him. Yeah. And almost looking like he's enjoying it, too. Clapping as he's playing defense well, on if you, Quinn Cook. If you're going to knock off Duke, you better enjoy defense because they execute so well. But from the early stages of this one, it has been the Turks that are playing with the emotion and right in four spot. And now Wells has gone to the bench. Allen and Pishon Howard in the backcourt for the Turks. We'll see how that changes the dynamic as they step up the pressure. And then Kelly back to the bench for the Blue Devils. A lot of tactical moves by both coaches in the first eight minutes of this game, trying to counter each other's moves. They're trying to figure out who's hot. Suleiman's been hot so far for the Blue Devils, as well as Plumlee. Those are the two guys that have been putting it in the hoop. Plumlee and Lamb, the matchup of the centers. Mike Krzyzewski talking about how you can't simulate a couple of things in a practice. One of them is quickness, the other is length. And it's one thing to try to get ready for a guy like Lamb. As Suleiman knocks down another one, it's another thing to actually see it in game conditions because Len at 7 to 1, 250, as big as Plumlee is, Len's considerably bigger. Well, and he's able to maintain and hold his position. And if you don't have to bring a double team on Mason Plumlee, it allows you to stay home to the shooters on the outside. And that's one advantage that Maryland has that many teams that play the Blue Devils don't. Dangerous pass by Allen. Layman with a runner. And the rebound down to Thornton. Suleiman, by the way, now with eight of Duke's 12 points. A three of five shooting. He has come off the bench ready to go. Answering the bell for Coach K. Ball screen to try to free up Suleiman. He'll kick it to an open Hairston. And Suleiman with the offensive rebound. Well, Mike Krzyzewski said it was before the game. Suleiman is not the story. The starters are the story. Suleiman's becoming the story the way that he's played so far tonight. And he draws the foul. Well, it's going to be a great day tomorrow. Super Saturday on ESPN with five games beginning with the ACC semifinals for Greensboro. The Phillips Big 12, Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. The Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters from New York. And then the Pac-12 Championship. Settle in, order in, and get ready for a great day. All a part of Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods as Ryan Kelly gets set to come back in. Hey, look at the Pac-12. It's interesting right now. You're looking at the NCAA tournament, and you're trying to see, is there any bubble stealers out there? I think one of the more intriguing games on the schedule for tonight is Utah versus Oregon, because Utah is not making the NCAA tournament unless they win the Pac-12 championship. If Oregon was to win, it assures you that no bubble stealers will come out of the Pac-12. And that game, by the way, Utah-Oregon, you can see tonight at 11.30 Eastern time on ESPN, Arizona and UCLA playing in the other semifinal in the Pac-12. 
Sumon off to a great start right now. He needs to continue to keep playing with this level of confidence. Logan Aaron Hall is into the game for the first time for Maryland. That's him with the ball. Sharpshooter, a transfer from Albany, and that's Wells who has returned for the Turks. Wells got it right off the bench, and they're going to immediately go to the monitor to see if that should be a two or a three. I think his toe might have been on the line. That was my initial read from the position that we're sitting at. It'll be interesting to see the replay and see where his footing was. Les Jones working this game along with Roger Ayers and Brian Dorsey. Les Jones over to take a look at it as Len kicked it out. Oh, no, he's good. Ooh, I think it's a three. I think it'll be a three-point yeah. shot as well, and it is. A nice job by Wells and a good quick reestablished. Suleiman stays in, trying to show and help on Len. And then as he closes out, he closes out with his arm flat rather than his arm out and running at him high. So Wells, just a 29% three-point shooter this year, is two for two from beyond the arc tonight. And Maryland leading by six as we have passed the midway point of the first half. The winner of this game will play the winner of our next game, which is North Carolina and Florida State. You can see that one about 20 minutes after the end of this one here on ESPN2. Suleiman a miss. You know what I'm noticing? The Suleiman's doing a lot of dribbling. Look at Wells. I mean, just, he's a freight train. He's a, he's a runaway train right now. But Duke basketball, sharing the ball, ball movement, setting on ball screens. There's been a lot of dribbling in their half-court sets in the early stages. Curry, no. He's had a quiet 10 minutes, 11 minutes so far for Duke. You know, I also think in these tournament settings, sometimes it benefits the team that has already played. They've gotten out their jitters. They're more comfortable in the environment. I know, I know that Duke is familiar here in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, but it does help you get into the rhythm. And out in the open floor, this is where Maryland has to put pressure on the Duke Blue Devils, and Des Wells can do it. Again, reading the defense, seeing Kelly in front of him, that is the third time he's attacked Kelly back in the paint. He has 14 of Maryland's 22 points. Only three Terps have scored. Wells, Lehman, and Allen. And a travel is the call on Mason Plumley. Let's check it again with Janine. Well, guys, who did Mike Krzyzewski single out when we were talking to him pregame about Maryland? Des Wells. He wouldn't give up the scouting report when we asked him what stood out about last night's game, but he said Des Wells is a guy who can make things happen. He is so strong with his body, and that is also what his assistants noticed last night when they were here scouting the game. And Des Wells, even though he's just a sophomore, he has really shown a lot of leadership taking over in that last huddle, that last time out. And how about the assist to Alex Len from Des Wells? Well, they need to get Len going. I understand they have a 10-point lead right now. Things are going well for Maryland. But you want your big man to continue to play hard. And often, if he's not getting the ball, he starts to fade out of games. Okay, I got a good stat for you. Well, they've made nine baskets, Maryland. Wells has six of them, and he's assisted on the other three. I mean, he is doing everything tonight. So you're saying he's made an impact on this game. <laughs> he's having a pretty good night so far. Plumley the miss. Faust fouled hard by Kelly. And Nick Faust will be at the free throw line when we come back. Des Wells and the Terps are revving it up here, Sean, in the early going against Duke. Wells has scored and he has found his teammates. And the Terps have a 10-point lead. So far. They're getting out and running, man. And running creates energy and opportunities. Great vision. You see where your teammate is on the floor. Now you got to find the spot where you want to deliver the pass on time, on target. You deliver the pass, and you get the great flush. And it's not the only time they've been able to get out and run. Des Wells is doing an excellent job sprinting with a sense of urgency to try to put pressure and flatten out the Duke Blue Devils defense. Six fast break points in the early stages for Maryland. And it's not just about those fast break points, but it's the confidence and the energy it gives you to get back at the defense. Defensive end and defend. You can see Maryland's knocking down threes. Duke is in two areas where Duke traditionally dominates, as you can see how Wells has dominated tonight. Two areas Duke traditionally dominates is they turn you over and they score off those turnovers more than they than you score off their turnovers, and they almost always do better from behind the arc than the opposition. But right now they're not outperforming Maryland in either of those two areas. And and if you happen to have been with us, and Mike Krzyzewski would be the first to tell you that Maryland came out with an energy and a determination and an aggressiveness that at times Duke has not matched so far here tonight. Well, they haven't matched it primarily for the entire game so far. I mean, they came out, they got punched in the face early, now a 9-0 run for Maryland. 
Mike Krzyzewski took a timeout less than two minutes into the game to try to fire up his team. Look at the scrambling and the rotations matching up, finding their man. And Wells will be back on Kelly on this possession. And now Maryland's gone from a really big lineup to about as small a lineup as Mark Turgeon can use. And it's off the leg of Plumley out of bounds. And this is one thing that Coach K said is tough about coaching against Maryland. They've got so many different guys. They can go to so many different looks. You have to be constantly aware of who's going in, who's coming out. And we've seen Mark Turgeon go with a huge lineup and now go other than clear in the middle. He's got four guards in the game. Well, and what has impressed me so far about Maryland in this game is they see nine of 18 for the field goals. They're shooting 50 percent. Their offense hasn't changed. Their rhythm hasn't changed, even though their lineups and their looks that they've given Duke has. Allen, not shy at all, misses the three and cooked down with the rebound for the Blue Devils. Quinn Cook had an outstanding season, a Kuzi Award candidate. Did not start the first couple of games. Coach K said he wasn't ready to be a good player yet. That's a quote from Mike Krzyzewski before the game, but played well against Kentucky back in November off the bench. Moved into the starting lineup of the next game and has been a starter and a big-time performer for Duke ever since. Kelly. And that's going to count. Great toughness that time by Kelly. A lot of contact on the play underneath. You see him absorb the contact through, loses the ball, then gets fouled, falling backwards, and still throws it up. Looks like before the foul that Kelly kind of inadvertently elbowed Faust in the side of the head. And that is a play, by the way, that if Mark Turgeon wanted them to look at, they could. Yep. And that conceivably, if they can go look at it, that could have been a flagrant one the other way. And Kelly with his first three points of the night. Curry hasn't scored. And Duke is down nine. Wells gets out of trouble. Wide open, Pishon Howard, who made a couple of big shots last night, but has struggled shooting the ball most of this season. He misses the three. Cook the kick to Thornton. And Cook the offensive rebound. Finds Thornton again. And Cook gets the bounce. And the problem with that defensive possession for Maryland is they were running, but they were gambling. They were out lunging. They got themselves out of position. And Duke was patient enough, moved the ball well enough to get a good clean look that time. You can use their aggressiveness against them if you're patient. Faust lost his footing. And P. Sean Howard called a timeout to try to save the possession. This will be a 30 second. So it'll be a and have to do the play their way on the right side of the bubble. Right now they're in that next four outline for Joe Lenardi. A win here tonight. That could really move them up the charts and put them in a position where a, a maybe it's just a trip to the championship game is good enough to get them in. Alex Land, who made his first three of his career last night off an inbounds play, just got another look from beyond the arc off an inbounds play, but he missed this one. And now the matchup of the centers resumes. Plumley. Kelly stepping back a little bit strong on the jumper and the rebound down to Howard. Jake Lehman, who played very well early in this game, is back in there now for the Turks. Well, but those are the type of shots that Mark Turchin told us he wants to see Ryan Kelly taking. Contested shots up over the top, making his life difficult. You want to crawl up and not give him a lot of space. And now Kelly having to chase Wells around on the defensive end. Wells is making some tough shots from in the corner, all of them right in front of the Duke bench. And he had a smile and a look towards the Blue Devils on his way back down the court. Uh, he's playing at one of those levels that when the quarterback says the, the speed of the game has just slowed down ever so slightly, that's how it is right now for Des Wells. This game, everybody else is frenetic. He, he is very calm, cool, composed, and understands exactly where he is out on the floor. Watch the way he turns Ryan Kelly around here. Ryan Kelly literally gets caught up and comes back into the screen. And he recognizes that immediately and attacks and finds a good look. Seven for eight, 16 points. Tyler Thornton just came back into the game, and we'll see if Mike Krzyzewski brought him back in specifically to defend Wells once Maryland gets the ball back. 
Well, good job by Keyshawn Howard right there to nine and going to the bench. Very impressed by Maryland in the early stages of this game. Long way to go. Well, you got to keep this momentum going for the final 430, though. You don't want to give Duke a lot of life, but if you're the Blue Devils, you got to start executing and finding a higher quality shot. Plumley to Suleiman. It was very hot early. Back to Plumley for the slam. That's a higher quality shot. <laughs> It's, it's twice that we've seen that play go, though. And a little handoff, a little slip screen action, and twice Plumley's been able to get up into the rim. And it is indeed Thornton now on Wells as Kelly shifts on to Lehman. Mark Turgeon was about eight feet onto the court. Open three, not there for Howard. Tipped, saved, and Maryland ball. Look at Allen. Tough shot, and Plumley down with the rebound. Duke, Duke looking to run. Cook can't get the finish. Len comes up with a loose ball, and now Maryland with numbers. Wells, he can't convert. Back come the Blue Devils with numbers. Kelly's open. Layman down with a rebound. What a oh. frenetic sequence, and nobody scored a point. Yeah, settle it down. <laughs> settle it down. Poor execution, really, by Maryland. It was a three-on-one opportunity there. Wells maybe a little bit too selfish on that play. Should have distributed the ball back to one of his teammates. Wow. And Mike Shashevsky, the Duke fans, asking for a travel. Evidently, the ball must have been tapped. Now they will get the travel belatedly by Alex Lynn. All right, Chris, thank you. And this has been a fun one to be courtside at with Maryland leading Duke 28 21. Don't forget Florida State, North Carolina still to come tonight here on ESPN2. Miami and NC State have already advanced into the semifinals here for the Greensboro. Duke led the ACC 42% from behind the arc, and that's their first made three point shot of the game. One for eight. Tyler Thornton, somewhat of an unlikely candidate, at least compared to some of his teammates, knocks it down. Seth Curry's been on the bench for a while, was not making shots, and he has really uh, been a non-factor so far in tonight's game, but Duke has crawled back within four. Howard, cross-court pass to Faust, and he knocks down the three. Oh, just great ball movement. Right, unselfish, reverse the ball, reestablish where you are on the weak side, make yourself available for the diagonal pass back, and able to knock down a wide-open, uncontested look and answer the three by the Blue Devils. Des Wells, who's been the dominant player tonight with 16 points on the bench right now for Maryland. Plumley with the running hook, off the rim, rebound down to Land. Faust into the lane, and Plumley down with the rebound. Maryland has remained in attack mode just about every second of this game tonight with pretty good results. And they've remained in team mode as well. Des Wells has been huge. Put me in, coach. But nine assists on 11 main field goals so far for Maryland. Suleiman, so hot early, now with a double figures. Duke back within five. Forgive me now, 12 for Suleiman. You saw Curry looking on from the bench. Suleiman picking up the slack in the absence of Curry scoring tonight. Wells to the scorer's table to check in. Kelly's there for Duke. Allen. He knocks down a three. Six of 13 from behind the arc. Maryland could not have played much better here in the first half against the Duke Blue Devils. Final minute. Hand off to Suleiman, open for three. And now Maryland in a rush. They could have held it. There were only a couple of seconds difference. They could have held it pretty much for the last shot. Instead, they get careless with a basketball. A two-second differential. You've just got to maintain your possession and go to the locker room at worst with an eight-point lead. Yeah. Instead, the Blue Devils get a look. They switch their defense up on Suleiman. Faust on him right now. Howard on Cook. Suleiman the kick. Cook open on the wing. Plumley with a rebound. And Mark Churchin pumping his fist, applauding his. Got the for the Duke. They've got more. 
Welcome back to Greensboro, where Maryland continues to lead. They're up seven on Duke, 7.39 to go. Time now to check the Reese's perfect play. Well, you can fear the turtle when they're moving the ball as well as they have been so far tonight. Watch the double team come and great execution. You see the hand go up immediately by Faust. Stretches the defense, long run out over for Suleiman, and Suleiman's got his hands to his side, and the reason why his hands are to his eyes because he doesn't understand why Kelly had it cut so far deep back underneath the hoop, but that's because there was a mismatch and beautiful recognition immediately by Maryland. Let's go to Janine. Well, guys, I was just at Maryland Tuttle, and very positive energy. All the players nodding in agreement with Coach Turgeon, nodding, smiling, looking at each other. Very positive vibe. And what he was telling them was to be careful to guard these ball screens by Duke. Late in the shot clock especially, they got to make sure their defense is poised. And from Duke on the Duke huddle, Coach K was very methodical this time around. He was telling his guys, hey, we are still in this thing. I didn't see any yelling or screaming. Thornton misses the three. Let's get to Janine's point, too. Uh, Alex Lem did a much better job keeping contact with Mason Plumley on that play. Des Wells coast to coast, and the lead is up to nine. First field goal of the second half for Des Wells, who just owned the first half here tonight. Under seven minutes to go. Kelly ran the rebound. Maryland's got a chance to have numbers. Faust. And that'll be a foul on Thornton. A good job once again in transition. You're going to watch his ball get off the iron and immediately well surveys the defense. Everybody's got his back to him. Kelly doesn't pick him up until he's already past the three-point line. Hey, there's where Kelly tried to initiate the defense, and by then it's too late and did a nice job changing his body in the air to make sure he didn't go into Plumlee. Foul before the shot. Wells now with 20 points in the game. First field goal of the second half. So it'll be Maryland the ball on the baseline. Mark Turgeon trying to urge him on. 6.48 is a long way to go. But this would be a huge win for Maryland. They've won this tournament three times. The last time was in 2004 when they beat Duke in overtime in the final. And Alex Lynn, a pump of the fist as the big fella knocks down a jumper. And that's what NBA scouts love about Alex Lynn. He can pick and pop. He's got that turn and face game. As you put on more size and strength, he should get better with his back to the basket. Curry, step back three, not there. Wells the rebound. And misses the three badly. Here comes Suleiman. And there's a sense of urgency, though. All five of Maryland players back in the paint, picking up their men in transition, not allowing Duke to find those easy looks. Plumley kicks it back out. Kelly misses the three. Duke continues to struggle. Sean, they're two out of 19 shooting the three. I think it's worth stating again, they led the ACC in three-point field goal percentage as a team. Better than 41% on the season, two for 19 tonight. And Maryland now with a bonus as Thornton returns for Duke, Lehman returns for the Terps. Des Wells will take a break. Important that Maryland keeps its intensity level up, and so will Len. So now a lot of the scoring will fall on Allen's shoulders with this lineup and Lehman as well. Boy, Mark Turgeon is working hard on that bench, trying to make sure the intensity does not slip one notch. But sometimes we talk about fatigue factor. It's not just about the physical fatigue, it's the mental fatigue as well that you have to be concerned about as a coach. Charles Mitchell playing cheerleader on the bench. Maryland, the seven seed, defeated the 10 seed Wake Forest last night. Double digit lead on the two seed tonight here, Duke. Miami and NC State have already advanced to one semifinal. The winner of this game plays the winner of Carolina and Florida State, our next game tonight, in the second semifinal. And all of a sudden, it's the biggest lead of the game. Duke had it down to one on a couple of occasions. Now it's the largest lead of the night for Maryland as Curry is fouled before the shot. And that'll send Curry to the free throw line. And that's the last thing you want to do if you're Maryland is to foul, stop this game, and allow a shooter like Curry to get to the free throw line and find himself in a rhythm. 
And you take a look at Duke's offense on the season versus what they've been able to accomplish tonight. All those numbers on the right-hand side tell the story of why the Blue Devils are in this position. Curry makes the first. And how many times have, have you called a game where you've seen a player to the caliber, caliber of Curry yeah. get to the free throw line, yeah. knock down two free throws, and the next thing you know, he scores ten in a row. Yeah, as they say, you don't want to let, you know, let a good shooter see the ball go through the basket in any way, shape, or form. And Curry, great free throw shooter as well, makes them both. Can Duke get stops? Maryland continues to share the ball and get high percentage looks. And everybody doing their part. Allen off the bench. Clear off the bench. Now a turnover, though. Curry knocked it free. Thornton's got the ball. Double team on Plumlee. Cook lays it in. Oh, good possession that time. Plumlee was trapped. Looked like it was going to be in a difficult position for him to execute, but able to make the play. And then Cook commits a foul. His fourth foul. Wells and Len back into the game for Maryland. Mike Krzyzewski with an animated conversation with one of the officials, Brian Dorsey. As P. Sean Howard is going to hit to the free throw line for Maryland. P. Sean Howard, one and one. One and one for Howard. An excellent free throw shooter himself. And if this game comes down to a free throw shooting contest, you look at. Maryland as a team, 67%. Duke, 73%. The advantage would be them, but they have shot it extremely well so far here in tonight's game. 11 of 13 as a unit. And the subs just keep on coming for Maryland. Wells back in. Howard to the bench. Less than five minutes to go. And Curry is fouled. I think Allen's going to get a call for it. That'll be the 10th team foul on Maryland. So it's two the rest of the way for Duke. And Curry wants to get earning his way to the free throw line, aggressive and attacking. And if I'm Curry, that's what I do for the rest of the game. I force Maryland's guards to have to defend me, aggressively attacking and turning the corner. Do not settle for a perimeter shot. When you know you've got two free throws coming your way, you're struggling with those numbers of two and eight and one for six. Didn't score in the first half. All nine of his points here in the second half. Four guards and Plumlee for Duke. Kelly on the bench right now for the Blue Devils. And Curry had been playing outstanding basketball coming in this game, back-to-back 20-point -back games, yeah. playing with a lot of confidence. The free-throw line can give him back some of that confidence. Maryland bigger at just about every position on the floor right now. Wells thought about it. He's got Plumlee on him. Len calling for it. He's got Suleiman on him. Plumlee goes down to help. Seven to shoot. Four to shoot. Faust. Lehman had it, but it bounces into the hands of Cook. Wasn't ready for it. Cook driving on Lehman. Floater, good. Nice play. Different level of intensity for Duke at the offensive end of the floor right now. Everything is going towards the paint. They are not settling for their perimeter shot. There are some nights where you just have to look up at the scoreboard and you look at the stat sheet and you go, you know what, guys? Our three-point shot, it's just not there. Can we win a game when our three-point shot is not falling for us? And that's the question that Duke has to answer right now. And if, as long as they continue to be aggressive and turn this corner, they put themselves in position. If you're Maryland, so many young players 
this you're looking for an upset you're in a position against a very good team a team you've beaten already this year but that was at home no Ryan Kelly what's the most important thing for the Terps to do in the last four minutes well you got to rebound the basketball you got to sure up misses you can't allow the Duke Blue Devils to get second chance opportunities and then offensively you just maintain what you've done the entire game look for high quality shots pass the ball unselfishly to your teammates do you like their poise? Have they stayed poised yes. throughout the night? Enough, enough for this lead right now and enough for them to win this game if they can get stops at the defensive end. It shifts a little bit from the offensive end to the defensive end here in the final four minutes for Maryland. Pressure because coming from the Blue Devils, Sorsha. Now yeah. you look at Duke, 16 of their 21 field goals have been in the paint. So they, they are definitely focused on trying to attack Maryland. Inside four minutes to go. Maryland with the ball and the lead. Wells just bowling his way into the paint. It's up to nine. So you do what you do offensively. Now it comes down to defensively. How committed are you here to get a stop? Duke has been aggressive. Plumley lays it in on the feed from Curry. And that's just too easy if you're Maryland. If you're Duke, that's what you want to continue to do. But you can't trade baskets as well. Three and a half to go. Here goes Wells again. Absorbs the punishment and will be shooting two when we come back, but he is down. Deswell shaken up. And we will try to get you. All right, Chris, thank you. Des Wells, who appeared to injure his left knee on the drive, stays in the game and will shoot the free throw. Sean, what did you see? It looked like when the foot came down right there. He kind of recoiled a little bit. You could see him reach for the left knee while he was still in midair. Yeah, that left knee buckled ever so slightly, but it's good that he's still out on the floor, able to shoot this free throw. Let's go to Janine. Well, guys, it looked like it was his knee, but it was actually a Charlie horse in his leg. His leg was cramping up. The trainer tended to it, then he sat down on the chair. He was grimacing quite a bit, and then he, it worked itself out. A huge sigh of relief from the Maryland coaching staff that he's okay, and he makes the free throws. Got 24 points. Maryland up by nine. Every time you get a sense that Duke is ready to get back into this game, Maryland has had the answer. Plumley, nice spin and the lane as Mike Krzyzewski continues to go with Kelly on the bench. Four guards and Plumley. Well, a good decision here to stop the play and get the wet spot yeah. right back up because Plumley fell twice, twice <laughs> yeah. on that possession. A lot of perspiration on the court in a game like this. A nice strong move underneath. Again, Plumley reads where the double team comes, spins off opposite of it, able to finish. And you see the long slide, and then as he gets up, his feet just right. slip right out from underneath him. Duke fans starting to chant, trying to do whatever they can to help their team onto the semifinals. Duke, a possible number one seed, maybe a probable number one seed, in danger of getting knocked out in the conference quarterfinals. Curry forces a turnover. That's one way to get a stop. Mm -hmm. Still everything. lots of time. Yeah, everything going well for Maryland. Though. Here in the second half, still shooting 62% from the floor in the second half against the Duke Blue Devils. And Duke has not made threes as Len gets a block. Plumley lost the handle, and it's Maryland ball. A good aggressive drive from the outside. Len steps over to help defensively in the block. And then the carom off of Plumlin. Faust. Len with a follow. Uncontested putback. It twofold on that play. One, the defense didn't stop the ball. Two, Plumlin didn't put a body on Len. Two big mistakes. Ten points, eight rebounds now for Len. Curry. Just the third three in 20 attempts for Duke tonight. The free throw line getting in their rhythm. That's that's the question. But Maryland, they've been in a rhythm all night long. And when they've been aggressive, when they've been attacking the paint, watch it come right at you. Probably shows, retreats, and gets back, but then doesn't put a body on Lynn. So as you retreat back, at the very least, you've got to make contact with your man. And Mark Turgeon knows that every basket right now, 231 left in a potential trip to a semifinal game here at the ACC. 
Championship Week is available anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone with the Watch ESPN app or at watchespn.com. And tonight's game and the entire ACC tournament is going to be seen in stunning 3D on the ESPN 3D network. As Mark Turchin was working the sideline there, you know, pacing left and right, pumping his fists and working his players to, to keep working hard. I had like a Gary Williams flashback for a moment. Well, I mean, and it also would look good in 3D. <laughs> I actually went to the 3D truck when I arrived here. Oh, yeah? I put on the glasses and I watched Dave O'Brien and Doris Burke in 3D. Nice. In that Virginia North Carolina State game. It was outstanding. Big win for NC State. CJ Leslie played very well. Richard Howell, despite a leg injury, played well. Scott Wood made seven threes in that game. There's Gary Williams, who coached Maryland to a national championship back in 2002 and an ACC tournament championship in 2004. A legendary coach that built this program up to such prominence and now Mark Turgeon. He's the one in the hot seat. He's the one that's got to try to maintain the success level of this program. What did he tell us yesterday? You know, sometimes you get 20 wins in a season and it just doesn't feel like it's yeah. good enough. Yeah, he said he's at a basketball school and they let him know that. It's, the stakes are high when you coach Maryland. Faust. Loose ball to the hands of Cook. Five on four now, Blue Devils. Thornton open. Rebound to Wells. Missed opportunity there with an advantage for Duke. And you've got a balanced aggressiveness for Maryland right now and the clock. Uh, that last possession, Faust did not balance it very well. And Wells placing aggressiveness over clock management on that drive, but that's his M.O., and it's hard to criticize given what he's accomplished tonight. Well, and how it's worked tonight, and how aggr their aggressiveness is how they've gotten this lead. And with 156, you know, sometimes you see coaches immediately go, okay, clock, clock, clock management here. Just pull it back out. You take away what has been the strength, and all of a sudden your team starts playing flat. They know there's a long way to go, but Lehman, Mitchell, and the others enjoying it, sitting on the bench right now. Wells perfect at the line tonight. Maryland is a team, 14 out of 16. As he's showing up here at the ACC tournament. Last night, a tremendous effort, and tonight it needed to improve that much more. He had 21 last night and 25 before this free throw. And a new career high for Des Wells. Eight-point game, under two minutes to go. Thornton will try it again. We could not exist early from the outside all night long for the Duke Blue Devils. And the fans for Maryland starting to sense it a little bit. Some long faces on the Duke bench. In danger of having a very short stay here in Greensboro. Duke Blue Devils 18-0 on the season with Ryan Kelly in their lineup. Last time the Duke lost the first game it played in the ACC tournament was in 2007. You can see an overtime loss to North Carolina State. Maryland's made 11 free throws in a row. The lead is back to 10. Curry with a floater to make it eight. And Mike Krzyzewski is going to use his last timeout. The story, if you haven't been with us, has been Des Wells. From the start of his game, Dan Schulman, he has been aggressive and set the tone for his team. And this one got us excited, and it got Maryland energized. And then dialing it up from the outside, showing every aspect of his game. His upper body strength, his control in which he's played with as he's aggressively attacked the rim has been a consistent presence for Maryland. The numbers speak for themselves. 9 to 13, 26 points, a career high. But they've also done an excellent job as a team, sharing the ball, being unselfish, finding the open player to get the great shot, not the good shot. 18 assists on the night for Maryland. Now Duke's out of timeouts. Double bonus for Maryland. The Blue Devils will continue to pressure to try to get turnovers. But if not, they'll have to keep fouling. And Maryland's not missing any free throws.
By the way, now, this is when he starts dialing back a little bit. Make sure he manages that clock. Let's see if Dez follows those instructions. Four ball handlers in the game right now for the Turks. Good usage of the clock so far. You can take this down to about a minute left on the game clock. Allen, ball's loose. Kick ball. And it's going to be Duke ball. Now they didn't score, but if you're Maryland, 32 seconds came off the clock on that possession. And now Ryan Kelly's going to check back into the game for Thornton to get another three-point shooter in there. Kelly's been on the bench a while. Has not been a good night for him. So that guy has a minute and one second away from pulling off the upset and advancing into the semifinals. It would be a critically important win for Maryland. Not only to advance here for the development of the program, all the young players they've got, but obviously it puts them back in the conversation closer to a potential. Don't want to get carried away, but closer to a potential at large bid. Next four out could move into first four out on Joe Lenardi's list. Cook. Off to Plumley, and it's down to six. And a timeout called by Mark Turgeon just before Len released the ball to Allen for what would have been an easy two. He was worried about a five-second call. Uh, he was worried about who the person was taking the ball out of bounds as well. He did not want and feel comfortable and confident that Len would make the right decision. He didn't really have much of a decision to make. Allen was wide open at the midcourt line, but underneath, Len steps to the ball, just as we've seen Maryland do at times throughout the course of the game, forcing the back line of the defense to scoot over and plumbly able to finish at the rim. Well, possibly the last ACC game for these three seniors, and Mason Plumley, Seth Curry, and Ryan Kelly, all of whom have had outstanding careers. Curry spent a year at Liberty before. Coming to Durham, Ryan Kelly injured for much of the season, had the big 36-point game against Miami upon his return. Mason Plumley, first team all ACC this year, but will their stay at Greensboro be much shorter than they had anticipated? Faust is going to inbound it now. Plumley's going to guard the ball. Just in time, and Faust gets it back. And Wells is going back to the free throw line. Good execution that time by Maryland. They broke the pressure. They were able to burn a couple of seconds off the clock. And now it comes down to just doing what they've done the whole game, making free throws. Thornton commits the foul. He is fouled out of the game. So a chance for Mike Krzyzewski to talk to his players. Kelly is going to come back in because Duke will be getting the ball back. And meanwhile, Wells who's just a 68% free throw shooter on the night, has made all six of his free throws in this game. Charlie Horse notwithstanding. And these are the moments where you, you, you look to try to get the ball in the hands of the player that's hot, and Wells has been hot. If this tournament was to end today, and this was the final, Wells clearly would be the player of the tournament. And now, you know, steps to the line as a sophomore, huge free throws for Maryland. I mean, on the release, it didn't even touch the iron. Confident kid. You talk to him for two minutes, and you can sense his excitement about playing in a league like this, about playing in a tournament like this. Eight for eight. And now you got to kind of speed things up if you do. Cook. Yes. Five point game. Back to Wells. Why not? And he'll go back to the free throw line. No, the defense has got to be a little bit better. For Maryland, that last possession, you could have had Plumley for a wide open dunk. Of course, you got the three point shot, which was great. But you got to tighten things up right now. And again, last night against Wake Forest, a terrific game, and he's outdone himself tonight against Duke.
You know what I love too? He steps off the line, he smiles, he's shaking hands, he's not allowing this moment to get to him. He, he's handling the pressure beautifully. He's thriving, he loves it. 10 for 10, Maryland 21 of 23. Kelly can't get the shot off. Now he forces it up. And it'll be Peshawn Howard shooting free throws. And listen to the Turk fans now. And look at the Carolina fans all standing and applauding as well. Well, you mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. When the underdog looks like it's going to win, all of a sudden everybody else that's alive in this building that's not a Duke fan, they, they turn on him quick. Cook has fouled out of the game for Duke. Alex Murphy checks in for the first time tonight. The next game coming your way about 25 minutes after the end of this one. North Carolina. And Florida State will have it for you here as Terrence Shannon and the Seminoles are hoping to knock off the Tar Heels. P. Sean Howard knocks down the first. Maryland's recipe of success. Get on the boards. One of the best in the country. Rebounding the basketball. Attack. Aggressive from start to finish tonight. And this nine-point lead with 27.8 left to go. Mark Turgeon. He's not ready yet to relax. Murphy just into the game for the first time. Air balls the three. And no foul, and that'll do it. Maryland walked onto this floor looking for a second consecutive win against the Duke Blue Devils, and they're advancing to the semifinals. The Terps defeat the Blue Devils for the second time this season. Their first time beating Duke in this tournament since 2004 when they beat him in the championship game. And Maryland is moving on to the semifinals tomorrow night as they knock off the number two seed and the number two team in the nation right now. The Blue Devils stay in Greensboro is surprisingly short and Maryland is heading to the semifinals against the winner of the next game that will bring you in about 25 minutes here on ESPN 2 North Carolina and Florida State are coming up the winner to play Maryland 